Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be checking out the 2015 Volkswagen Beetle R-Line. This is a two-door compact with seating for four. The R-Line features a turbocharged engine as well as a fairly large rear spoiler. It also features a unique front bumper with fog lights. The Beetle has a drag coefficient of 0.37 so it's not the most aerodynamic vehicle. However, it still has decent fuel economy ratings with 23 in the city and 31 on the highway with the manual transmission. As tested, this vehicle's MSRP is $26,015. The rear trunk is pretty small, but you can fold down the rear seats to allow for more space. So let's have a look under the hood. Now for how compact this car is, I was surprised at how kind of well laid out the engine bay is. Uh, most things are pretty accessible, as is the case with most engines these days. There is an engine cover, but it can be easily removed. In the front right of the car, you've got your major service points, so your dipstick, your oil fill, uh, windshield washer fluid, and your coolant fill. Now the radiator itself is fairly buried underneath this covering right here. The battery is tucked back on the driver's side easily accessible. This is a 2 liter inline 4 cylinder turbocharged engine. The engine features dual overhead cams with 4 valves per cylinder, direct injection, and variable valve timing on the intake valves. This engine produces 210 horsepower at 5300 rpm and 207 pound-feet of torque at 1700 rpm, so peak torque comes on very early thanks to the turbocharger. The engine has a cast iron block with an aluminum cylinder head. So let's follow the path of the intake air. So the air first comes in here into this inlet where it will then be pulled down through the air filter which is located here and then back to the inlet side of the turbocharger. Now you can see this intake is fairly flexible to allow for vibration and movement of the intake. The air travels down into the inlet of the turbocharger and then towards the front to go to the intercooler. The intercooler is located behind the AC condenser. The air then travels up from the intercooler into the electronically controlled throttle body and then into the intake manifold, this plastic composite piece we see here, uh, with four individual runners for each of the individual cylinders. The air then travels behind the engine through the exhaust manifold into the exhaust portion of the turbocharger. From there it travels through a single exhaust pipe to the rear of the vehicle where a common muffler then splits it into two tailpipes power is sent through a six-speed manual gearbox. The torque is split between the two front wheels through what Volkswagen is calling the cross differential system, which is electronically controlled. Basically how this works is if one of the wheels starts to slip while you're accelerating, uh, the car will apply brake pressure to that wheel, allowing more torque to travel to the wheel with traction. In a way, it mimics a limited slip differential. 18-inch alloy wheels wrapped in very wide 235 over 45 continental rubber. So for a car of this size, it's pretty cool that they've gone with the rubber this wide. 12.3 inch ventilated disc brakes up front with a McPherson strut style suspension. Another interesting thing they've done is you actually bolt up the wheels rather than using lug nuts. Uh, and it's kind of a little bit inconvenient when you're putting the wheel back on because you don't have those threaded bolts to slide the wheel onto uh, and then just simply screw down your nuts. Here you can see the steering linkage and the lower control arm. On the other side you can see the drive axle here, fairly short with the two CV joints at each end, and then the anti-roll bar which is linked up to the top of the strut. 10.7 inch solid disc brakes in the rear, multi-link suspension with separate spring and shock. This allows for a bit more trunk space as the spring doesn't intrude. Four connecting arms, you've got one up here, this lower one down here with the spring, this trailing arm and then finally this lower link right here. The anti-roll bar you can see here, it's a bit tucked in but it connects up with the trailing arm. So let's have a look at the interior. Sporty pedals and a very large floor mounted accelerator pedal. Manually adjustable front seats. So sitting in the driver's seat, the seats are firm but comfortable and there's actually surprisingly quite a bit of leg room. I thought, you know, this is a pretty small car so I wouldn't have much leg room, but you know, I can move my knees, they don't interfere with anything, uh, full reach for the clutch pedal and everything like that. There's also plenty of headroom. I've got several inches above my head, about 6'1", 6'2", so plenty of space in this vehicle in the front two seats. The steering wheel leather wrapped with a flat bottom, you've got Bluetooth control, 
as well as you can select through the menus of your gauge cluster. Um, you've also got your cruise control on the left here, and I thought that originally that this would kind of be a pain um, because of where it's located to be able to reach. Actually, your index finger, your pointer finger, can reach it pretty well. Uh, the only thing that is kind of an issue is if you have cruise control on and you want to cancel it without tapping the brakes, it's kind of a strange reach in order to do that. Very simple and straightforward gauge cluster, which I like. You've got your tachometer on the left, speedometer in the center, and your fuel gauge on the right. Pretty large fuel gauge. Another thing that I like is you can go through the menu options and you can actually check your oil temperature as well as your coolant temperature. The airline also features some center gauges, so you've got your oil temperature here. Again, you've got a lap timer, which I find a little bit ironic because you can't actually turn your traction control off, but you know you're going to the lap with your Beetle. You also have your boost gauge here, which reads in absolute pressure. So anything over about 15 PSI and you're into the boost. Six speed manual transmission with fairly long throws. Uh, in order to put it in reverse, it's kind of clever. You push it down, then over, and then in to reverse, and then simply pop it back out and into first to start. One of the things that's kind of interesting is they have this center armrest here, which is cool and all, but uh, it's kind of strange that it would interfere with the parking brake as well as it actually covers up this first cup holder. There are lots of storage compartments throughout. You've got this left little storage area to the left of the steering column. You've got this area up front in the center. Now you have an auxiliary input for MP3 players, but there isn't a USB. You do, however, have the 12 volt. You've also got storage underneath the armrest and storage within the armrest and then two glove boxes. This top one's pretty small, but it's still nice to see them make use of this space. The media system and climate control, all very basic, but simple and straightforward. And you also have heated front seats with three different settings. Visibility out of the front is okay, and to the sides it's actually pretty good. I do have some complaints with the rear visibility, starting with this mirror. This mirror is way too small. In fact, you can't even see the top left bottom or right of the rear window. You just see kind of the two headrests and a little bit of the center of it. So they either need to get something with a wider field of view or a larger mirror. So I have the camera angled here so you see what it looks like for the driver to look out the rear view mirror. And as you can see, you can't really see the top, the bottom, or the left and right sides of the window. So you kind of got to move your head around a good amount just to see what's out the rear. Looking out the rear to your right is fine. Though when you are merging and you look to your left, the C-pillar is pretty large, so it blocks a good amount of your view. Sitting in the rear, there isn't really headroom or legroom if you have legs or a head, uh, unless you're a very small child. That said, they do have a cup holder back here as well as a 12-volt outlet, so that's kind of nice. I guess if you have a kid that wants to play on their tablet indefinitely, they can do that back here. So enough about the interior. This thing was made for some windy roads, so let's take it for a test drive. Now, one of the first things I noticed when I started driving this vehicle was how long the gears are. First gear can take you all the way up to 45 miles an hour, and second gear can take you up to 75 miles an hour, which is pretty crazy. Uh, it seems a bit unusual for a car like this. It seems like the gearbox is made for something with a bit more power. Um, I think they could have gotten a little more torque out of it, you know, with the gear multiplication at the wheels uh, and a little bit quicker car if the gearing had been better. That said, the engine's pretty powerful and your peak torque comes on very early, so, you know, it's still a quick car. I will say the clutch pedal is extremely light, uh, probably one of the lightest clutch pedals I've ever used. Uh, so for an engine of this much power, it's pretty impressive to see that the clutch pedal feel can be so light. The transmission feels very good. Shifting is very easy, very quick. Uh, throws are pretty long, but it's smooth. Now this will be a good vehicle if you've never driven a manual car before to learn how to do it in. It's pretty easy to drive. For a car that weighs just over 3,200 pounds uh, and has 210 horsepower, it seems to move pretty good. So how does it handle when we get to some of these tighter corners? It has very wide tires and somewhat decent anti-roll bars, so you don't actually notice much body roll uh, compared to you know normal daily drivers, and the wide tires really help through the corners. Thank you. 
Now you don't notice any torque steer in second gear, but in first you definitely can feel it. And that may be partially to blame for why they did the gearing the way they did it. You know, one of the interesting things about this gearing is if you're in some stop and go traffic and, you know, first gear is geared so long so the gear ratio is fairly short, it means you need a bit more power to get going. So, you know, when you just start and you're just kind of coasting in first gear at about a thousand RPM, you're still doing about seven or eight miles an hour. So in stop and go traffic, you're going to be using your clutch a lot. Whereas if the gearing were lower and you could be at a thousand RPM at about three or four or five miles an hour, then you know you can kind of creep in traffic and not have to use the clutch quite as much. You know, it doesn't feel like a Beetle, I gotta say that. I, I kind of had the impression, you know, you get the, the history of the Beetle and primarily women driving it. And you know, this is a fun car to drive. Is it a GTI? Probably not. I've never driven a GTI, but it is a fun car. You know, one of the interesting things about the gearing being so long is you can actually merge onto the highway completely in second gear. So, driving on the highway, this is a pretty rough one. Uh, you do hear a little bit of wind noise, uh, and you do hear the tires a bit. It's, it's fairly quiet though, it's not bad. So I just took the Beetle on my fuel consumption run, which is about 53 miles, mostly highway and a little bit of city mixed in. Um, typically don't exceed speeds of 65 to 70 miles an hour, and I drive pretty non-aggressively. And as you can see, the Beetle did very well. Average consumption of 37.3 miles per gallon. The car is rated 23 city and 31 highway, so well over its rating, so pretty impressive to see. So let's just talk about the vehicle overall. The things I like, it's got a great amount of power, uh, and it's very punchy, you know, you've got a lot of torque early on. The other thing is, you can get really good gas mileage, you know, if you don't step your foot down all the time, uh, which is kind of tempting to do. The handling's pretty good, it's got really wide tires, I like that. And I also like how much instrumentation it has. The ability to look at your oil temperature, the gauges up front, to look at your boost. I really like what they've done with that. Some of the things I don't like so much, um, I think it could use a little bit shorter gearing and it'd be a little bit quicker. Uh, the other thing is the interior, you know, there's some of the interferences. And my biggest complaint overall with the vehicle is this mirror. You can't really see out the rear very well and I just think they should choose a different mirror than this one or one with simply a wider view. But overall it's a fun car to drive and I've enjoyed testing it out this week. If you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.